scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And now, brethren, uh -huh, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified you can be among those who are sanctified but not built and without any evidence of your inheritance the bible says that a man can be commended first to god and then to the word in this case he calls it the word of his grace the word of his grace being the word that is able to provide and make manifest in your life all the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. The Bible says the word of his grace can achieve two things in your life. The word of his grace that is able to, number one, build you up. Everybody say build you up. And then number two, to deliver to you. Now notice how the word of God, I really want you to understand this scripture. Notice how the word of God works. It does not start by giving you an inheritance. It starts by working on you. So that when you sustain that capacity, then there is nothing God is unable to give you. <laughs> Many times we desire things, physically and spiritually, that we do not have the spiritual, psychological, and physical stamina to receive. Are we together now? Yes. This, this podium is resting on... A casted ground it has the ability to take the weight of this so there's no trouble your seat was designed with your weight in mind are we together now so your sitting on that seat is not a threat at all it is able to take you but you cannot carry this speaker for instance and drop it on certain seats it will break so the Bible says that the Word of God scans your life and looks at the magnitude of spiritual inheritance to be given to you and then it starts by building you until you rise to that level in the spirit where no weight of spiritual substance on you can break you then it delivers to you are we together now so this is already a word of encouragement so that if nothing is being delivered to you as it were you are not discouraged because you know that it means capacity is being built are we together many times services like this are not just times of receiving things it may be times of building it is not always that something is just given like you receive something a substance many of us just want something we can receive and run with if it is God, he gives gifts according to his riches. There is nothing God gives a man that is small. And so when God delays in giving you, it is because he's allowing your capacity to be able to retain. Are we together? Yes. Very powerful. It is not enough to receive. You must sustain an ability to retain. Because you can lose something that God gives you. The Bible is full of things that were once given to men and taken back. So God is able to take advantage of his word to build me and build you and then when we gain that statue in the spirit, then deliver to us an inheritance 
among them that are sanctified let your word come and bless us oh god in the name of jesus let me encourage you again i say this to you from the depth of my heart and i say this to you in all truthfulness and i say this to you with all audacity if you listen to the truths that i teach you you will never fail it's true leave your situation and the pride around it don't mind it focus on the truth you are listening to and see how forcible right words are the bible says how forcible there is a force that right words when you receive it can exert on your situation until it bends and glorifies the lord so tonight please take your eyes away from what you are trusting god to do or what has not been done just focus on the word the worst spirit in my opinion demonic spirit now is not death death is just the last enemy not the worst the worst spirit is not the spirit of infirmity that causes sicknesses now the worst spirit listen carefully is not even demonic attack dreaming of somebody chasing you up and down the worst spirit is the spirit that can cause blindness in your understanding the bible says it is able to make even the word of god unfruitful that the god of this world has an assignment to create a system of blindness over the minds of the people so that they are not open to the glorious gospel it is the worst state a man can be in not sickness not failure not poverty none of these things in themselves destroy it is our attitude around them that empowers them to destroy us but blindness whether you do something about it or not it will destroy you blindness every time jesus saw blind people he was very he was intentional about their healing blind people are mad people these two categories anything that affects your eyes and your mind is truly demonic are we together there are people doing exploits in the world today without hands there are people doing exploits today without the ability to speak there are people who do not have limbs and are doing all sorts of things but you will seldom find a madman do anything that is impactful there are people who can even you know just rise above the limitations of blindness but you look at their lives and you know that it is not easy when god opens your eyes and opens your mind is a true miracle are we together now i was sharing i can't remember where now um, i think it was one of the departments i do not know that i was having a meeting with them and then i was sharing with them how that a man is not truly delivered until he receives grace that gives him passion for the word any man that rejects the word is oppressed even if he does not see any spirit in his life you don't have to have a dream of a demon chasing you the moment there is a resentment for the wisdom of the word it is it a sign that your life is acutely under an attack are we together blessed be the name of the lord and so as the word of god comes please i i challenge you to open up your heart see it as the word of his grace that is coming to you regardless of what the limitations are pay attention to the word they looked unto him and they were not ashamed their faces were lightened looking at your situation will not change anything but if you look to the word the word has a force that the anointing follows the word not a man the anointing looks like it is following a man because that man is following the word are we together now the anointing does not follow men the anointing follows the word blessed be the name of the lord be fruitful write it down 
that's our topic for tonight be fruitful if i were you i would say amen, amen. Hmm. open our eyes in the name of jesus let the word of god change us genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 we're reading to 28 the lord declared this year by his spirit that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and my assignment is to guide us by the spirit on the principles allocated um, for our fruitfulness our productivity and our efficiency in the kingdom and tonight we're dealing with something very very important genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and elohim said let us make man so man is the subject here after our in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle over the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and god blessed them the bible didn't say and god discussed or he said to them please listen and god blessed them and said unto them some other version say and god blessed them saying so he routed the blessing through words but the blessing are not words the vehicle for communicating them is just a word he can choose to use any other mechanism remember he's god and god blessed them and said to them first instruction be fruitful and multiply not or multiply be fruitful that means fruitfulness is not the same as multiplication are we together when the bible says something or something it means either of the two holds the same value but now he's saying be fruitful then in addition to fruitfulness multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it then it says have dominion etc etc so tonight we are picking one be fruitful and we want the lord to open our eyes and to understand god's idea of fruitfulness colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 praise the lord colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 for this cause we also paul is speaking since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god being fruitful not in some in every good work hallelujah so we see from scripture that fruitfulness is a command fruitfulness is a command in fact jesus demonstrated in his own earth work how much he resented on fruitfulness once upon a time the bible tells us that jesus was on his way back and he saw a fig tree and that the tree had green leaves in other words it was attracting his attention but coming to the tree he discovered that there were no figs and jesus not a prophet that is still being renewed not an apostle in the making jesus himself looked at the tree and cursed the tree and said that no fruit will come out of you again and by the next day they came and discovered that it had withered right from the root so god is passionate about fruitfulness are we together please write this down to be fruitful means to increase to increase to be fruitful means to be productive fruitfulness entails increase fruitfulness entails productivity fruitfulness entails enlargement and expansion are we together fruitfulness entails evidence evidence 
you are fruitful to the degree to which your life can produce evidence what evidence evidence of the faithfulness of god evidence of the investment of god upon your life evidence of the supremacy of the word in your life why do we need to be fruitful it's important we know let me just address that because we have a lot to deal with why do i need to be fruitful because you know there are christian circles today well-meaning that think subjects like this should not be the believers should not be bothered with the subject of fruitfulness why because most times when we talk of fruitfulness all they think about is money and physical things they just look at fruitfulness um, in terms of affluence physical and material blessings and then they convince themselves that anyone can live without them and then they assume that all those things are distracting but the bible says we need to be fruitful in every good work every good work every good work are we together why do we need to be fruitful john chapter 15 and verse 8 we'll still make reference to that scripture but please go with me very quickly to john 15. i pray that god opens your eyes to understand this once and for all mm. verse 8 hearing is my father glorified when you bear much fruit how is the father glorified when you bear much fruit when you bear much fruit when a man pays the school fees of his son and the son returns back with a report card and says daddy out of 90 students i took number one and my average is 91 i am doing well that child is fruitful that child justifies the investment of the school fees are we together but on the flip side if the child returns back with a report card and is written there need to see the parent and zero from top to bottom is that child fruitful no the the father is angry for many reasons one he's angry because he's the father are we together just being the father alone is enough to upset him the owner of this child that is carrying this shape are we together two because his resources a symbol of his energy was committed into that boy's life so the bible says the father is glorified when we justify his giving us the holy spirit when we justify his giving us his wisdom his favor remember our scripture here that has become an anthem when god makes all grace to abound towards you he expects fruitfulness in other words he in his mind he does not see that there should be an excuse in your life because all grace has been well coordinated towards you if you're with me say amen, amen. the father is glorified when the saints bear fruit all kinds of fruits number two bearing fruit also inspire and encourage you most people do not know that when they bear fruit their, their own spiritual lives also continue to grow spiritual barrenness is very dangerous and barrenness in every regard is dangerous biologically speaking when people experience any kind of barrenness it's not something that is received with gladness it's something that challenges them can even destroy their marriage so we know for sure that any form of barrenness calls for action are we together now yes hearing is my father glorified but then god gives you consolations that my life is producing fruits producing fruits producing fruits the third reason why we need to bear fruit is because our fruitfulness is a message to the world that god is true our fruitfulness is a witness that can cause men to believe in god very important john chapter 1 please and verse 6 john chapter 1 john chapter 1 and verse 6 our fruitfulness there was a man sent from god the bible says whose name was john seven 
the bible says he the same came for a witness what was his assignment to bear witness of the light that through his witness all men might believe so when you are fruitful through your witness men might believe god is depending on men to believe in him but their faith is routed through your results are we together now that means that there is a dimension of my result and your result that has the capability has the ability to make men believe god if it is true that we are passionate about seeing his glory revealed then we must truly desire to be fruitful to the end that men look at our lives the last verse galatians 1 yes 24 and they glorified god in me galatians 1 24 and they glorified god not just through me in me and they glorified god not they glorified me and they glorified god in me are we together gentiles need to see the light the results the evidences of god's hand upon our lives let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters results are a language it is true when you bear fruit even fruit that abides it is a language that speaks to creation about the faithfulness of god it is a language that attracts creation to the one true god the source of all lifting so god is passionate about our bearing fruit mighty god settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness when i am fruitful when i am productive when my life begins to produce evidences that god is glorified let me tell you something about fruitfulness you can say the same thing without fruit and say the same thing with fruit and the impact will be east and west fruitfulness makes your words heavy when you have results your words are worth believing the words of a fruitful man are seldom contended with when people speak from a standpoint of results there is a compelling conviction that it brings to you and so if we want creation to subscribe to this life that we so propose day and night telling them jesus is the way the truth and the life telling them that he is the one who can lift men god is counting on our lives to be able to produce that message and in the name of jesus he will find he will find a real witness in you yeah. be fruitful is a command in the loins of prophecy when god was looking at adam and prophesying he saw joshua selman he saw koinonia and he said be fruitful in other words i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness in your life be fruitful but like every other mystery in the kingdom there are there are we are mandated to understand the spiritual systems like i've always taught you uh, that our results depend upon i've taught you again that between your desire and the manifestation there are spiritual systems that connect them are we together i've told you the prophetic speakings of god that when god speaks he does not speak as though he's talking to a man he speaks as if he's talking to himself and so some factors will not be captured in his speakings it will take the spirit of revelation to break what god has said down so that you now see how you connect to that word god can look at you and say where is the house and you are sitting down wondering and say god who are you talking to and then he says i'm talking to myself you see that it is the spirit of revelation that will break that down so that you begin to understand that god does not speak like men knowing how god speaks is very powerful and it is a spirit of revelation that can help you and help you understand the communications of god 
Are you with me tonight? Yes. So there are mysteries, secrets, principles, you can call them, allocated for fruitfulness. Wishing fruitfulness is a waste of time. Just having a strong desire for fruitfulness is a waste of time. It may be beneficial for a while because at least it can draw you to the secret place where you create the atmosphere for the spirit of revelation. According to Proverbs 18 and verse 1, it says, Desire through desire, a man having separated himself, it says he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. But that in itself does not make you fruitful. There is a lot of superstition in the body of Christ. Ask the average Christian, do you believe in results, fruitfulness, productivity? He or she will say yes. And then you ask them, how is it going to happen? Then you will hear the variety of ignorance expressed through many well-meaning words. But the bottom line is, I don't know. Some will say Jesus will do it. And it looks very right just because the name of Jesus is in part of that that erroneous statement jesus would do it others would say i will work hard i will do my best we are called to walk circumspectly everybody says circumspectly i told you that in a man's dealings with god creativity is almost not needed it is obedience it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature that is where your creativity comes the principles that make for your greatness are not left for your guessing they are there listen please when you get this you will stop wasting your time trying to crack your brain to know god trying to crack your brain to get truth no truth is not an idea it's not just the function of the mind you don't reason truth it is revealed there is a body of knowledge allocated for your results are you getting what i'm saying now yes if i have this bottle of water it's already there my assignment is to find it not to try to look for a way of 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 refining water and all of that and and and, and purifying it no it's already there this is how truth is don't think that truth is like many ideas that you crack your brain to just download no it is given and received otherwise it is not there if it is truth then it is not subject to the ideas of men. It's something that comes from God. If you get this, you will be restful. Your assignment is to create the atmosphere for that truth to come. Lord, what are the keys towards my fruitfulness? And you remain there. Waiting like a waiter. And the spirit of revelation comes. And when it comes upon you, the secret is revealed he says then the secret was revealed unto daniel listen every truth in the kingdom is revealed 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 every truth in the kingdom is revealed if it is truth then it was revealed whether the custodian of that truth admits that it was revealed or not the bottom line is that it was revealed so all of the spiritual activities that you go through for truth to come is only preparing the atmosphere for truth to come if the spirit of revelation does not bring you truth my brother and my sister you will end up conjuring sophia human wisdom ideas that cannot stand the test of time you can think ideas you can read books here and there and connect things but truth is revealed are we together And the Lord showed me something very powerful. And that's what I want to share with us. The mystery of fruitfulness is enshrined in a very silent parable that I want us to deal with right now. Hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 8. Mighty God, open our eyes and help us see. Wherever we stop tonight, we'll pray. Luke chapter 8. We're reading the first 15 verses. Look at this. We call it the parable of the sower. It's not the parable of the sower. It's a kingdom mystery hidden in a story and kept only to be revealed by the spirit of revelation. Just because you read this 
does not mean you will have an understanding now you can give a theological explanation as to what you think was happening you can even write a book about it but my brothers and my sisters this is sealed until it is open you will never see what is there are we ready now so let's read it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village jesus now preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of god and the 12 were with him verse 2 and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities mary all of that together they went with him verse 3 um okay so you know the bible is just giving us the setting now of all of this i think it starts from verse 4 and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city he spake but he spake by a parable he communicated but he used a parable to hide the secret what is the parable verse 5 a sower a sower went out to sow his seed follow the story a sower no name he went out to sow his seed so whoever this sower is we know that the sower was desiring fruitfulness are we together nobody just goes to sow seeds just because he feels like throwing seeds so one the sower had seeds number two the sower was a sower are you getting what i'm saying now listen a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed it's amazing that everything that happened by the wayside and the rest was called sowing it was not a mistake as he sowed some fell by the wayside listen and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it two some fell on a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground so we know that they didn't just fall that falling is sowing because even on the good ground it uses the same word so it's not like the seed maybe a bag with holes and then it fell until it got to the good ground no he sowed there is a soil called the wayside and he sowed there and he watched what happened now the first thing we have to be thankful for is that god did not hide the failures of this sower otherwise we would have been deceived about fruitfulness the bible gives us the complete story of the struggles of this sower to the end that we may have a balanced understanding are we still together let's continue our story the bible says an order fell on good ground and it sprang up and bear fruit an hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried jesus started crying imagine that as i'm teaching you now i just finished then i, I pause and i start crying when the bible says he cried in many regards he really cried it's not just that he lifted his voice loud he really cried why did he cry he that had ears to hear let him hear how can you finish talking to people my brothers and my sisters this is jesus adult jesus not the child learning something in the temple and you stand and teach people and then start crying do you know why because we're saying wow jesus are you this smart and jesus said oh dear jesus was revealing through this story what was happening as he was teaching it was not just something that happened one day alone he was crying because there was a repetition of that story real time as he was talking he being the sower are you getting what i'm saying now yes let's go back to verse 5 now there are certain informations that we really really need to believe and understand about this to help our fruitfulness I, I just thought to explain this parable notice that Jesus was so passionate about this parable he didn't allow any human being interrupt the interpretation 
he said i will interpret it myself there are many times he would not interpret certain parables he would just leave them but this one he says so that there is no confusion i will explain and in many times jesus will leave some details out in explaining a parable but this one every single detail was explained to tell you his level of passion let's go to verse 9 let's finish and then we'll come back to verse 5 go to verse 9 and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be are we ready now let's hear jesus interpret his own parable and he said unto you hallelujah it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of god this is how he started interpretation Jesus interpreting now and I said, leave that matter. The reason why I will interpret this to you is because that thing you see is a coded message. But unto you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Every time the Bible uses hearing twice, the second hearing is understanding. Are we together now? Next verse. Now, the parable is this i love jesus now the parable is this number one the sower the seed is the word of god mm. the seed is what not a business idea we are talking fruitfulness here the seed is not an investment plan listen carefully the seed that produces that harvest is the word of god number two those by the wayside are they so those soils are people listen carefully people who have hearts the wayside are people the rocks all of that they they are different states of people's hearts notice the goal is to produce result but everything is happening inside a man's heart it just uses a farm to explain the entire labor of that fruitfulness is happening within the man, not outside the man. Are we together tonight? It says, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Are we together now? Out of their hearts, not out of their life. He did not touch anything external. He just came into their hearts, removed the seed of the word of God, and left every other idea there. He didn't tamper with their ideas. They didn't tamper with all their plans. He just carried the word factor and left every other thing. And the Bible says, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, they receive the word. So they are an improvement to the first set. The set, the first set just heard, but the second set heard and received the word with joy. Remember what the Bible says about joy. It says they fulfill the spiritual law here with joy. And then the Bible says, and these have no root. Which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Next verse. And that which fell among tongues are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked. The first set heard. The second set heard, received, added joy. The third set heard and took action. Are you seeing now? All an improvement to themselves. And were choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection that means they started bearing fruit but the fruit could not mature the last set 15 but that on the good ground are they look look at look at this look at this they are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth more fruit with patience they are not creative people what made them good was honesty that they had an honest and a good heart and by that honesty they were given an ability to keep it and the bible says they produce fruit for soils. jesus is teaching on fruitfulness now let me tell you this kingdom mysteries are very foolish and childish they were designed that way 
so that you have to be like a child to understand their operations and that is the reason why many people never become fruitful and never get results because of the simplicity and the childlike character of spiritual communication are we together now look at this i am very grateful to god that the sower himself was not mentioned the bible never told us who the sower was so the sower could be anybody the bible tells us what the seed was and the soils the reaction how they were planted and the results are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this very carefully do you know that we need to congratulate this sower first for his patience and endurance because whoever this sower was it is true that he had to survive a lot when you plant a seed and then it dies then you go to another soil and it improves a little then you go to another soil and it improves a little the bible is very careful to let us see the transitions of this man and saying that all of it is part of an equation that can be captured in, on your journey to fruitfulness the same sower continued to do this until he got to a point what was the difference my brothers and sisters between the wayside and a hundredfold returns the wayside once upon a time now a benefactor of a hundredfold returns every soil was a description of a level of development and the corresponding challenges that would stop that man listen the first we see in the life of that person the wayside according to jesus's own interpretation was a revelation of extreme carelessness you can know that whoever was the possessor of that heart condition was a careless person are we together now there was no discipline at all for the devil to you only enter a man's house and freely pick something without him unnoticed if the doors are not closed there is no system of guidance he did not place value on the information and there are people like that all over the world the moment the word of God comes to bless them, they, they, they are sympathetic to what the preacher is saying and they hope they are understanding. But quite honestly, they do not mind. Whether the information is lost or not, it has not become precious and valuable. They have not seen the usability of that information. And so the press to guard and to protect is not there. Are we together? You only protect what you have value for. If you do not have value for it, you may not protect it. When you finish eating your biscuit in a in a, um, the the uh, what they call it now, the the sachet or so, you throw that thing inside a dustbin. Why? Because it doesn't mean anything for you again. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, forget about true success and fruitfulness if. The word of God and the truths delivered do not mean a lot for you. You have to get to a point where you have a desperation, a hunger and a thirst for truth. Remember that we prosper according to the third epistle of John, according to the prosperity of our souls. And the Bible says that the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul, the renewal, the transformation of your mind. Are we together? Let me digress a, 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 a little bit and let's go back to our Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. So God's ability here is not in doubt. The Bible says he is able to do. To be able means to be capable. To be able means it is within your power and it is within your jurisdiction. The Bible says he is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let's hold it there. Ask or think. I've explained it here. When you say ask or think, that means your asking and your thinking carries equal value in the spirit. That both your asking and your thinking are both prayer requests that rise to God. Your asking can be saying, God, bless me. And your thinking, say, God, I just changed my mind. Don't waste your time again. 
and that both of them are prayers that can rise to God. The Bible says God is able to do what we ask or do what we think. The thought realm was where the entire story in the parable of the sower was. It, it was an interaction in the soils of their hearts and their minds. Notice that when in the interpretation of those things very little was talked about their hands and any physical energy it was an activity of their minds that determined their failure or their success and even the extent of the success the deliverance that comes through transformation is a much needed deliverance in africa is a much needed deliverance around the middle belt around the north we need a radical shift in our perceptions and in our understanding otherwise we will continue to mock and flatter ourselves and never give room for the fullness of the glory and the power of god to manifest ask someone what do you think is the key to lifting and rising the next thing they begin to tell you all kinds of stories they tell you get a good job they tell you do a good business others will tell you find a good relationship you know somebody who is a destiny helper etc etc those things only matter when these foundational things are in place listen my brothers and my sisters the beginning of your success is when the word of god arrives in your heart and in your mind not when you get a job the starting point of all fruitfulness is the arrival of the word that lives and abides forever your heart and your mind write it down please your heart and your mind a major part of your fruitfulness happens there the manifestation the manifestation is something that can happen suddenly man of god listen to me businessman listen to me career person listen to me the external factor plays a very 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 small role in your overall success you are a reflection of the prevailing power of the world within you you are a reflection of the the maturity of the word of god in your heart and in your mind your heart and in your mind that means that the word of god alters your perceptions the principles of the word of god have gained entrance into your mind i'm more concerned about the mind part because that is where the stronghold of demons the stronghold of territorial limitations dwell many times when the devil wants to keep people fruitless do you know what he does he makes sure that the word of God cannot get to their mind, but every other thing can get to their hands. Sometimes Satan destroys you by giving to you. He makes sure that your mind never receives anything. Your mind can receive, can be buried while your pocket is full. And you will, anything that your mind has not received is not your own. If they pay you a salary that only got to your hand, you didn't receive a salary. And very soon you will know no matter what it is please hear me my brothers and my sisters if it has not been captured in your spirit and your mind it's not yet your own we possess things in our hearts and our minds first before our hands demonstrate that we have gotten it our generation is obsessed with having physical things because you see when you have physical things it can give a show of results are we together now and and it can suggest some form of progress but real progress is what happens in your spirit and in your mind say my spirit and my mind one more time say my spirit and my mind we're discussing fruitfulness now so that a brother and a sister aspiring to rise to be fruitful according to the word of god that you are not listen carefully that you are not allowed it is not given to you to really experience fruitfulness until that happens in your mind 
and your life and the bible says the first seed that must enter your life and enter your mind please hear me it is not an investment idea it is not a business idea listen it is not it is not it is not um uh, what do we call it products and services they only will make sense when the word notice that the bible never tells us that the farm did not have other things but when satan came he only searched for the word and carried it and left every other thing there the word of god is an incorruptible seed listen please my brothers and my sisters get this the word of god is an incorruptible seed the mindset it says let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 let this mind be in you and verse 5 let this thinking let this perception be in you which was also in christ jesus philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind permit this mind permit this mindset to be in you which was also in christ every blessed person every world changer whether in the kingdom and in the secular will tell you that your point of advantage is not what you have in your pocket your point of advantage is not a car your point of advantage is not the house the point of advantage is the quality of the information that your mind like a womb has received and is able to incubate show me a man whose spirit and mind has received from god I show you a man who there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to destroy his fruitfulness it is first in your spirit and your mind while that is happening you're still with your trouser that you use needle and thread to sew doesn't matter while that is happening you are still in your one room with leakages everywhere stay there while that is happening there are no members coming to the church there are still you your wife and three other members don't worry you don't get the anointing just by hands laying on you the hands are only like a tap the hand stops on your head but the real impartation goes into your spirit When you drink water, your mouth allows the water to go in and it stops. But the water does not stop in your mouth. It gets into your system. If you leave water just in your mouth, it will not do much. You need to swallow it. When you swallow it, go to bed. Every other thing starts automatically. The moment it leaves your mouth, leave the rest. A system has already been designed. You don't just say, water now, where are you? Okay, you are here shift left no 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 don't worry when you swallow a drug you don't look at the drug and say drug please make no mistake it's my eye not my back there is a design your job is to get it within you and let it stay sometimes some drugs take longer than others to start working there are some drugs that can even cause you to be drowsy to go to sleep so that it can really work and then it will damage everything that it needs to destroy whilst working my brothers and my sisters listen to me the foundation of true success is not running around with proposals i have a proposal I, I need capital i need this i need that no the major work that anybody will do it's not even carrying certificates all around and say just give me a job yeah, and my life will change there's nothing wrong with those things those things are profitless when your mind is barren it will not make any difference it will only convince you sociologically that you are better than someone else but sooner or later you will see that your life does not recognize those activities as progress are we together now there are many pastors who think that ministry rises just because of connections and invitations if i can sing here or preach here or do this no no your real fruitfulness is within the richness of the word of god within you the quality of the wisdom your interaction with the wisdom of god everything that happens is only a revelation of what is going on within the parable of the sower the entire 
the entire story of that parable is about the hearts of men a sower and seed the word of god the living word joshua chapter one please give it to us and verse eight joshua chapter one moses is let's let's even start from verse five give us verse five we'll read down to verse eight there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not fail thee nor forsake you he's doing something to his mind he didn't give him a new knife and say this i sharpen this knife it can cut through trees no he's doing something to his mind that i am empowering your mind that if you can believe this no man will sustain an ability to stand before you all the days of your life and then verse 6 it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people shall thou divide look at god speaking there are giants so and god is telling him how to share the land not how to fight the giants in god's mind victory was settled i've given you victory not by giving you anything physical i did something to your mind that's your victory be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We win not just by physical fights. When our spirits and our minds agree, let every devil clear the way. It's true. Be strong and of good courage. For unto these people thou shalt divide. He didn't say you would die during war. I thought Joshua would say, come, oh God, assure me, these people have real knife. Will I die or I will leave? Already, if God tells you you are going to share a land, it will be stupid to be asking whether you will die. God is saying, look, I've seen the end of it. Let me teach you how to share the land. Look, look at victors. Look at fruitful people discussing sharing the land, not fighting. We're talking about Jericho and other nations here. You are standing before a fortified city and God is saying, this is the slice. This one will go to this. Are you getting it now? So you see somebody that does not have Gary and is saying, this one will go to charity. This one is going to go to my parents. I have five siblings and I will take care of them. And you enter and say, what is happening? And you say, I'm planning. I'm planning my victory. You say, you are planning your victory. Are you aware that your mother is in the hospital and we need just 20,000 to help her? You say, I'm already planning. I know that I will. Which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Seven. Only be thou strong. What is the requirement? Be strong. Not just be skillful. Don't get me wrong. These are factors, but I'm arranging them according to order of priority. Be strong and very courageous that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. This is God giving a man a recipe for success. And he's not saying anything about the war he's about to fight. He's not saying follow through the back door. And not, the instruction for victory would come later. He's giving him a winning formula. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous who will make your way it's not only god that makes a way he can empower you to make your way and if you are not ready to make your way prosperous it's a commitment it's a call to responsibility and thou shall have good success brothers and sisters life is systemic we are not the first to enter any realm we desire not at this level god has empowered people listen god has empowered people in business in ministry spiritual life whatever area god has listen god has allowed us to see the scars of people his his the bible is not just full of triumphs it's also full of failure and scars the bible says that all scripture were written for our learning that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope so god allows the 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 the, the, the record of many people's limitations so that you will learn be fruitful 
is a command be fruitful oh thou sower be fruitful and you're saying god change my life change my life and you're thinking in your mind capital oh god capital just give me five hundred thousand, and god you can even go out of my life and the devil is saying i like this kind of prayer i like anything that takes the word of god out of a man's life he will leave the capital with you and take the word away and you will watch with wonder how you will mess up your own life if i talk to many of us now i say what are you trusting god for in what area are you trusting God for results? I will be surprised how many of us are expecting external things to happen so that it can be proof that the word of God is working. No. When it has to do with fruitfulness, the major work is within. How many ministers will stay and build capacity with the word? There are ministers who do not have a Bible, but they already have suits in advance. And... I believe in success we teach you all the dimensions of success but let me tell you just putting pictures and photos of nice things on your wall and mesmerizing without the word of god is scientology you are just joking and nothing will happen it is the word of god that empowers as many as believe him he gave them power to become jesus said follow me follow the word and i will make you make you the maker is the word because it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why business people who reject god are in trouble ministry people who reject god are in trouble career people who reject god are in trouble it's amazing how many people leave church to go and honor an appointment because they've indoctrinated themselves to believe that god is a luggage vain is the strength of a man in this world that we live in it is the richness of the word of god the richness of your spiritual understanding that translates into your fruitfulness listen invest in understanding invest in understanding before you invest in clothes invest in understanding before you invest in hair invest in understanding before you invest in cars and houses and all of this to invest in understanding is not to buy books to invest in understanding is not to watch sermons to invest in understanding is to have the preparedness to pursue exact knowledge to buy a book is one thing to read it is another thing to understand it is another thing to apply it is another thing the labor dimension of fruitfulness is done internally please listen to me the dynamics of redemption happen in the grave after the third day when everything had finished the grave hades the place of the dead Jesus is done and he's ready to resurrect. Now he comes out in glory and we see the effulgence of his glory and he calls many sons into glory. Listen, if a major part of your life is visible for all to see, you are not successful. If a major part of your life is visible for all to see, in this kingdom, people are only allowed to see a minute part in fact it's even the manifestation most of the work is done within notice that your nourishment physically only a little part of it is seen they see the food and they see it entering your mouth every other thing the digestion etc etc be fruitful as as god has helped me to rise and grow i found myself I'm, I'm becoming more and more emotional to my own surprise because i look at people and i can understand the heart and the burden of jesus that he says he looks at people as though a sheep without a shepherd and i look i say oh i now see why africa is this way i now see why our lives are this way and do you know many of us believe that because we have sincerity life must answer to us sincerity is very important like we learned but it is not enough something about your understanding has empowered satan to destroy fruitfulness in your life something about your understanding please listen 
understanding is important when they employ you Sam come it's looking sharp and smart look at this when when you employ Sam you are not employing your body there are few employments where they border on size are we together now any size in many jobs can do what they are employing they are employing your understanding and the time with that understanding a job is time plus understanding in someone's assignment are you seeing that now yes so the factor is your understanding i've given this analogy come come stand here for me please look at this reason with me for one moment let's assume that this brother god forbid eh? i always give this example let's call this guy an arm robber that is a thief are we together and let's call this one a pastor a man of god looking sharp and then you are angry at this guy and you are praying that police will apprehend him because he's a nuisance to society and you are praying that god will open doors for this man to go to the nations because you consider him to be a blessing now shoot both of them now it's, it's not good to talk about shooting and a pastor but just in my example shoot both of them and let them fall to the ground dead who really died the dead body is on the ground now are you going to call the dead body a pastor is the dead body a pastor no is the arm robber is the dead body an arm robber neither the dead body nor the past the pastor's body nor the arm robber's body are the arm robbers or the pastor the pastor has gone the arm robber too has gone their bodies are there so who is really the pastor talk to me who is really the pastor this body if Sam adds weight, will it scatter the anointing on his head? Will it make him to suddenly become mad because he's not reasoning well? Not necessary. In fact, not at all. Are we together now? If this arm robber suddenly adds weight, does it necessarily stop him from having the appetite to steal? This is the arm robber and this is the pastor. When Satan comes, he doesn't need the body. He goes to the mind when the mind sits on the throne then the body becomes a slave to the mind the body becomes a helpless executor of the conclusions that have happened the board meeting happens between the mind and the spirit the body is not invited the body only executes the decisions that have been agreed upon same thing with the pastor when the holy ghost comes to you like he's coming to some of you now he's not concerned about the body he's concerned about your spirit then he's concerned about your mindset hand over to him your spirit and your mind so that he will plant in you the seed of understanding and watch how your body begins to reflect what has happened within you this my brothers and my sisters is how we are fruitful in this kingdom every other thing like creativity and all of these things only answer to this foundation say be fruitful be fruitful does not mean go and do business that comes later be fruitful does not mean go and look for capital be fruitful does not mean go and do all no no the heart preparation and your mind most believers have done well in the area of the heart the spirit but our minds are terribly unfruitful our minds continue to reject the spoken word of god concerning our lives and this is my assignment that if this year if we are to experience extraordinary fruitfulness then we have to trust god to begin to transit us listen carefully to transit us from different levels of understanding there is a requisite level of understanding that can receive what god wants to give you a man who is pastoring 5,000 members and a man who is pastoring 1,000 and a man who is pastoring 100 and a man who is pastoring 10. The difference is not their size. The difference is not their tribe. The difference is not even the God they gave their lives to. The difference can, may not even be the spiritual authorities they submit to. The difference is the construction of their understanding that someone has allowed the holy spirit to construct his value system 
to be so flawless that he knows how to engage the principles of the kingdom and the physical results show while he's activating these things every member that comes to him is in his house but something from within you calls them and it's not just anointing the health of your mind is a force too it can call the same way it can drive please listen to me my brothers and my sisters if you intend to be fruitful except it's just a cliche you know and, and and many times in africa i think this is the reason why we like signs and wonders not because they are such a big deal alone we like it because we believe it is a cheaper route to results just prophesy apostle why waste your time to teach this didn't god anoint you for me i mean just get bottles of oil here touch my head and just like that other person testified that you bear fruits that abide well while i was sitting down here we just had a brief maybe 10 seconds discussion with ajimi and he said he shared a scripture that just blessed me and he said the bible says strong men retain wealth powerful you are not strong just because you have it the ability to retain it means you have conquered the forces that try to take it from you are we together when you lift um, this weight you don't just pick it up and drop it down and win you must hold it for some time it's proof that it's, it did just happen you hold it there while you are shaking and then at a point they say you have the point has been proven that this one you qualify to lift that weight so there are things that when you hold if you are not spiritual and you did not hold it indeed it will slip away but holding it for a while qualifies that you held it through knowledge we don't hold things with our hands our hands only support what our mind has held the real instrument for holding things is your mind when it's too heavy for your mind your hand can support but you don't hold things with your hand. Is God speaking to us? You are seated here right now looking at me, swimming through a maze of challenges maybe, and believing that you came for koinonia so that you will experience transformation. Could be in ministry, could be in business, could be in whatever it is. But then the Lord is saying, I am limited by your understanding. There is something about your understanding that is not allowing me bless you. And let me tell you this. You see why Jesus wept. Any man of God who is committed to transformation knows how frustrating it is. It is difficult to get members to receive. That's why we take out time and pray. Not necessarily because what we are saying saying it's not necessarily the prayer that brings it are we together when revelation comes the truth is there but praying that when the seed is planted that the minds of the people can receive let me tell you less than 10 percent of members really follow and grow on the information they are given that's why testimonies are scarce that's why there are supernatural instant testimonies but not sustainable ones you will hardly see a member testify back to back for two months he usually will come once and you don't expect to find him again because most of the testimony was not gotten through knowledge prophetic intervention one miracle here i fell under the anointing and the next day this happened so i get a job by a prophetic word but i never get promoted you see that because the understanding that will make me that 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 trustable is not there i had the privilege to have a conversation with a very very notable uh, man you know one of the you know the second in command in one of the great institutions in this nation and then while he was talking to me and we were discussing he told me he said my apostle let me tell you it is not true that there are no jobs it's just that the level of mental depravity of the average young man with risk and this is a born again believer he said we are frustrated every time we take people to come for interviews as they talk we just continue to look at them and the privilege of marking school of ministry scripts has taught me that it is true 
you know we insult lecturers we insult everybody they gave me they gave me i have done at least you know i love god and i love you i have marked things that have said my god how in the world does this person plan to that's why teachings like it doesn't matter what happens in your mind just receive the anointing and rise we like it because we know that what is in there if god is going to remove it it will take time but i tell you don't fight with the spirit sit down and let him take that thing let him edit your understanding and plant the word of god and my brother and my sister you will watch your life rise to reflect what god is putting within you this is another place where the error of speaking without transformation comes just to call it no sir to where it's like opening a tap and there is no container to receive it the prophet was only comfortable to prophesy when there were vessels because the oil would be wasted without vessel to just believe that you just keep calling things at random to your life with an empty mind is a joke this is Scientology and you have to be careful with all these materials we read around about the universe and all of this let me tell you by the grace of God God has granted us the privilege of light in this ministry from any dimension you look at it where vast people who are keen on knowledge so we don't speak from a standpoint of ignorance whether from business from ministry from whatever we are we are by the grace of god enlightened enough to provide the guidance that gives you balance i can tell you many people will continue to be frustrated because they lack the understanding on how the kingdom of god and his systems accurately work are we together be fruitful is not just a prophetic declaration alone that happens automatically be fruitful leads you through a process and the first of the processes is to allow the word of god to find expression in your spirit then to find expression in your mind the moment your mind begins to transit start rejoicing with no idea yes sir start rejoicing because inevitably the physical equivalent of everything that is already happening will begin to come to you in 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 circles of what you will think are coincidences but they are orchestrations based on a spiritual law i was sharing with the leaders and i said every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up Be fruitful. He's not just speaking to your body. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. This is what will put money in your pocket. Be fruitful. It is not the capital that is given to your hands that makes you fruitful. It is not the business, the investment, or the job. The job is only a physical platform to give your understanding expression to reward you. Nobody prospers from business nobody prospers from investment nobody prospers from jobs you prosper off your understanding all of these things are simply platforms that give your understanding room that's why two people can have the same platforms but different understandings and all those vehicles will produce at different rates even in the good soil it produced 30 fold 60 fold hundredfold the same way we have several people here in koinonia many of you are members workers and leaders but your results are produced at different rates same anointing same mentorship same programs same teaching different results all producing are we together if you want to be fruitful your assignment is not to just start buying good clothes thank god for that i say this because you see young people have a pressure that society is pushing on people now they look at you and say since when did you graduate you say five years say, you are still dressing like this and the next thing god blesses you with thirty thousand. off you go to somewhere in anger i must buy stretch jeans thirty thousand. i must buy this and that and you shop it you you 
you you you shop physical things and then you put yourself under pressure and then you come back and say look this is to announce to you i have now improved we say why you say because i have a bigger house because i have a bigger car because i have a bigger this i have that to me that that is increased no sir and your mind keeps saying you are wasting your time you only bought something for someone else i look at your mind and the only thing you have bought is a book because that's the only thing that has stayed in your mind that's why nobody can steal the book because your mind caught it every other thing can carry the way because it only came around your life but not in your mind the wealth must be gotten here before it comes here are we together yes apostle now if somebody gives me money to start a business can't i just start and prosper you will fail it's not an insult you will fail 99 percent of the people who want to start business will fail not because there are statistics of failure your mind you do not have the understanding of the system to prosper anybody who wants to prosper your first assignment is to look for references and models transformation is easy when there are references not activity not action no listen when there is no reference your your mind operates with imagery and the moment there is no reference for the possibility that you want to step into you are not going there hmm. who is god speaking to that this thing you are doing you are just dreaming until there is a reference that's why by the grace of god we continue to walk with the holy spirit that he continues to lift us to make us better references listen let me tell you this if you sit under an apostolic ministry walking in signs and wonders you will enter into that grace fast because there is a reference your spirit can easily pick are we together if your pastor is a poor man by the grace of God, you will grow in the word, but it's going to be difficult because there is no reference. There is an impartation that results on themselves bring to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. That's why it's important. Every ministry and every organization rises to reflect the mindset of the leaders. It is true. Koinonia is a reflection of our mindset and also a reflection of our limitation. If you look at Koinonia and you see anything wrong, it is a reflection of the areas where personally my understanding and our understanding has not been well constructed. Our assignment is to bridge that gap as fast as possible through knowledge so that you will build what is akin to an edifice, a proof of mastery. As you grow, notice you grow in the secret, but you see your result on the members. You stay in the secret and God brings a new level of the anointing and you start watching in the physical to see. They were not there when God was giving you those new dimensions, but then you begin to get it. A time will come in this ministry, you will start seeing people have cars in strange ways. A time will come, you will see people start having certain results will rise. It is not just their personal faith, is that there has been an upgrade in the secret place that can now receive that level of reality. A time is going to come when we will get our own property. And sometimes it can be within two, three months and everything is put in place. You would think it just came. No, the lifting in the spirit. God now says, now you have the capacity. There are things if God gave me today, I prayed for it for years. But I look at it today and I thank God for not answering those prayers. Because had he given me, it is true that you would have been a waste. The same way you have been praying. Notice that certain things seem to never get answered in your miracle service request. And it is not always that demons are stopping it. It is God's mercy that is keeping it from you. Because it will be a waste. And if you lose it, it will take a long time before it comes. So God will keep it for you. And let you just wallow in your interpretation, calling it delay. Whereas God is keeping it like a faithful caretaker until your understanding is able to sustain it. Are we together? Yes. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate, meditate, meditate. 
meditate meditate value for the word of god listen let me tell you i i look at people in this ministry and i am blessed the way god is lifting people in this ministry sometimes i i i know how i met them and i know how they came and see the power of the word of god transiting people the word of god is not a charm the word of god is a compendium of the principles of god the understanding of the systems of god and obtaining grace to engage them is what changes your life listen a day will come you will sit down and say god stop giving me money as far as my personal needs are concerned i don't know what to do and god says it's an irreversible process it will keep coming so god will say divert anyone to the kingdom but to stop it it can't happen again Wait till I teach you on wealth this year. God taught me something new. Ah! You see how you clapped? It's a reflection of the passion and the prayer. Oh God. Well, and it's not an insult. It's a wonderful thing. But let me tell you my brothers and my sisters. If this mind does not change, your life will not change. A man is in bondage when his mind is in bondage. No matter how free he is, he is bound. Watch my knee was bound and kept in prison many things happened to him but when they bound him he spoke loudest because his mind was still alive hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah Let me encourage you sit down sit down we're going to pray we spend time worrying about people who don't like us do you know if they are not in your mind they can't do you anything wickedness only hurts you to the degree to which you allow it to step in it's true that you immune your mind that you come from a family where people say you too you want to rise you are also joining them you are coming to that that stupid place where there are you people are just jumping for nothing and you feel stupid and sometimes in that stupidity you open the gate of your mind and allow them to enter when they enter your mind you are gone set a guard over my mind it was a prayer set a guard Lord, that no matter what happens around my life, shield my mind and my life is safe. If you injure yourself, it can heal. Are we together? But the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. The bones can be healthy and the spirit broken and the bones begin to reflect what is happening. You don't off this light by breaking every bulb one by one. The light is reflecting the health of a generator and the health of a switch. Just because one switch is faulty, every healthy bulb will remain off at the mercy of one switch. The focus, my brother and my sister, is not in doing physical things. This anointing and this lifting you see, is not by physical connection. I'm a good musician. Invite me. I promise you that in the name of Jesus, I will rise. No. Let me tell you how to be invited. Stay in the secret place. Allow the spirit of God to brood. He will give you one song. He knows what men cannot resist. He will coordinate by all grace and anoint you one song that you will raise. People, and he will make sure the ear of the person who can help you hears that song. And he says, who sang this song? Come to my church. He will array every other helper and he will anoint you so lavishly that day. You, you rise like a spring up and never go down again. The systems of lifting are very easy when your understanding is in place. It is difficult for God to lift a man whose understanding is unfruitful. You will frustrate the potentials of the spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is a call to sit down. 
This running around and premature manifestation, comparing yourself with yourselves, the Bible says they are not wise. The key is to sit down. Someone will come dressing sharp like Sam is looking and try to intimidate you and say, you have been in this Zaria for years. The only thing I hear is ba 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 And your empty head, empty pocket, oh yeah, take and go and buy Indomie. And you feel stupid as you go to the shop with 1,000 naira and say, God, is this how you plan to disgrace me? And God will say, if I give you money, have I not insulted you? Listen, brothers and sisters, don't be so poor that all you have is money. If all you have is an object you remove from your pocket or an object that is stored in a bank out of fear, you are truly poor. Follow me when I finish those words. I told you be fruitful. We are just starting. Then there is multiply. Then there is replenish. Then there is subdue. They are not the same. Never be poor such that all you have is just money. If all you have is money, you are extremely poor because there are many things money cannot do. Most poor people agree with what I'm saying because they have been angry about money since, not because they understand it. You say this in an average church and people say, yes, it's true. It's just an opportunity to be angry at something they've tried to get. But it is true. God is giving you what is better than money. You know this issue of saying this person is worth this, worth that. Oh, Pastor Alpha, you are worth 10 million. What, what nonsense. What do you mean I'm worth 10 million? No. What do you mean you are worth 100 million, 1 billion? Those are just carnal expressions. Sensual manifestations. And it's not just say, oh, I'm worth the blood of Jesus. It's true too. But you can be worth something solid that is greater than money. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on. Listen, I have taught you that there are things when you have in life, only the poor need you. There are things when you have in life, only the rich need you. There are things when you have in life, only the educated need you. There are things when you have in life, only the uneducated need you. There are things when you have in life, only children need you. There are things when you have in life, only young people need you. There are things in life when you have, only old people need you. But my brothers, there are things when you possess in this life. When you possess it. The, listen, listen, listen. You walk life at your terms. The great see you and call you great. This is what God is giving you. Please sit down. We are going to pray. Listen, look at me. Make no mistakes to think all this labor is simply to get money to your pocket. If that's all I'm doing with this teaching, I've insulted you, I deserve to be arrested for insulting you that bad. If all that we are doing in Koinonia is just to get you to a point where you can have a car or a house, it's an insult. You don't need to hear what I'm saying to buy a car or a house. What I'm giving you will make kings stand before you and look at you. Listen, they will come with their pride and hang it like Sheba in front of your door and stand and say, teach us wisdom. Are you getting me? I pray in the name of Jesus that you understand that there is a more superior way of living. I can meet Sam and Sam can bring out some money to sow into my life as a man of God and I collect what Sam has brought and I believe I'm valuable because he gave me some money I look at the money and smile and then I run away no listen when you get what I am teaching you and putting in your mind you will find out that the equation that the world uses a young man you save for 10 years and get a house. That equation is for some people. I'm exempting you from that list. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen to me. Oh, borrow money from the bank and build a house, then repay over 30 years. No. 
there is a dimension that when you have my brothers and my sisters an estate developer will come to you and look at you and say can i give you the privilege i've taught you something look at this isn't it amazing that the greediest people in the world are still givers it's just that you are not the one they give to let me tell you this there is nobody that is really greedy they just believe you are not deserving of that level of communication some of our parents we will call them and say daddy support me and they will refuse yet a man of god will come to the city and they will carry 10 times the amount you have been begging and kneel down and say sir can you give us the privilege to sow they are not greedy they just believe it's unfair to give you that much listen your pride should not be a car your pride should not be good clothes what you are receiving you have left the level of car and clothes since what you are waiting for now is the systems that bring them i want you to believe in what i'm telling you if you think right now what you are getting is what will give you a car what will give you a car finished since 2013 14. you are receiving what will subdue nations not a car what is a car what is a bank account how many what is a visa to go to abroad london is it jupiter listen be careful the things that represent your expectations don't shortchange yourself god is giving you the keys of the hearts of kings of nations not not some little one one jeep here one this and you say now i have a jeep my mind ah oh, no please a time will come we'll just sit down and testify and we'll be grateful god just did this and that and that to be an insult that what you are learning now is just for an estate no an estate a car my brothers and my sisters be patient with god and be patient with me and watch what your life becomes it's a guarantee that i give you by god we're not talking of buying a car we're not talking of buying clothes we're talking of shutting the gates of nations i had the privilege to meet with a very great woman of god who is also a business person and while we were talking she was telling me her itinerary and she said she's on her way to france right now that the president of france they need to have meetings I said this is it whereas some mediocre somewhere is there harassing people just because he bought an expensive shoe there are people deciding the destinies of nations a president of a nation like france calling for you to sit down this is what god is training you to become the level of anointing you are receiving is not to compare yourself with somebody in your family to say i am first that's mediocrity that is for somebody who is just passing koinonia to go to his house that's what that person receives as the gift for just passing to go i testify testify that your goodness is real i testify that your goodness is real your goodness is real, I testify. Your goodness is real, I testify. Listen, the work you are doing in your destiny is what you are doing now. A time will come when from morning till night, all that you will see is testimonies of men coming to serve your needs. It will surprise you and because you will not be a man of god as it were you know most times we've thought that these things only happen to men of god it's not true these are the systems of the kingdom you've heard me say that we will all be great and that we will all know ourselves keep watching keep watching what our children will be keep watching most times people don't believe truth until it's too late there are people today who look and say i used to know this man it's not used to know god is giving you an opportunity to catch a flight that only the hand of god can limit where it is going it is by the spirit listen 
this tonight is a message of hope so that this pressure to prove a point throw it out of the window you have left that realm since hear what i'm telling you you have left that realm since pressure to prove a point oh apostle I'm, my desire now is to trust god let me just get a four bedroom flat and god says but you got a four bedroom flat right when koinonia started it is just coming through the loins of time to manifest who through faith subdued kingdoms there are some of you let me tell you when you're you see this is why when you see the physical manifestation of certain people's results the level of their transformation does not allow them to start physically at certain levels you see god jump to a height is because of the vastness of their level of understanding there are some of you here you will be surprised that your first car will be a jeep and people will be angry not because a jeep is anything god says if if i will have to be this is the fairest i can be to you based on how you have transited and then you will be surprised to find out that while you were thinking god would just give you a two-bedroom flat and this and that god will bring you to a five bedroom flat and God will say this is just to give you the convenience to start out in life and people will be surprised because it's not in your heart it's amazing how believers mark time under certain achievements it tells you that they didn't plan to go far one man of God sent me a text sometime and he said somebody sent him five thousand dollars said apostle i can't believe i'm holding dollars five thousand dollars and he was shouting was saying, ah god thank you and i sent him a text after a long time i said mister be careful that can be the very reason why you go down if your whole life is worth five thousand dollars you are very small are you getting what i'm saying that one person here one person will be able to have the resources that can completely clear an idp camp one person without making noise this is what god is raising you to become and you will not even consider yourself to be a kingdom financier doing that you are just somebody who loves god Hi. be patient be patient i cause the spirit of hurry be patient be patient watch what our children in koinonia become when they are five ten you will look at their lives and you will see how wealthy they will become independent of your contribution by engaging the word themselves there are some of you seated here right now and all you are dreaming of is starting your church and the anointing on you with all humility even many overseers do not have it and God says sit down there just sit down because I'm not giving you a church I'm giving you territories territories not just a small church to flatter yourself and compare yourself between a group of pastors and say I am better no sir no sir I testify testify that your goodness is real I testify testify that your goodness is real hey, your goodness is real I testify that you think God did not answer he's answered it since it's just that you didn't know how the answer comes he answered it since some of you God looked at your prayer request and all he saw was a blank sheet because everything you wrote you are bigger than it already and God did not see a need God is saying you've not given me a prayer request you wrote nonsense there Lord, if I can just have 30,000 every month, and Lord, if I can, and God just looks at it and says, the level of the word that is in you can only allow for minimum a hundredfold return. I say, God, but I'm a village boy, I'm a village girl, and God says, leave all of that one and stay with me. Listen, beware of the pride of unbelievers. 
respect unbelievers who have gotten knowledge but there are many unbelievers who are ignorant and you see them doing making all kinds of noise they will rubbish you and make you look small i sense that there is a spirit that is just going around great believers to make them feel small to make them look like we have waited so long is it that god cannot give you a shoe what is in a shoe that god cannot give you what is in a cloth you mean you are still using a, a second hand with one ah, but you should have left this level and you go back feeling stupid and god says my daughter forget about this are you ready to pray be fruitful he's giving you the keys of nations the keys the keys the keys not the key of a territory the keys of nations listen today by the grace of god koinonia has become like a place of pilgrimage you cannot believe the number of people who want to come here for visit i've had to restrain many of them pleading with them because I think that we may not have the facilities to truly honor them as we should. It is not location. It is not where you go. When you stay with God and the light shines from you, my brothers and my sisters, you will become a praise of nations that people will look at you and our family will say, we've been praying for rising. We didn't know God answered it in a person. We thought God would shift us to another territory. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, thank you. Though my beginning may be small, though my beginning may be small, but my latter end, though my beginning may be small, if someone pray, I am fruitful. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my pocket. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in a job. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my business, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am fruitful. Gentiles to my light. Gentiles to my light. Are you praying, Koinonia? Be fruitful. Be productive. God is altering your thoughts, altering your understanding. We win by the health of our spirit man and the health of our understanding God is showing you the laws of the spirit showing you success systems take your eyes away from the physical results I assure you nothing will stop them from coming men may mock you they may laugh at you where is the increase in ministry if you are really anointed? Where are the invitations to travel around? If you are really anointed, who is placing a demand on your grace? They will say, but forget about them and stay with the God of all flesh. Let him walk upon your spirit. Let him walk upon your mind. Allow that pregnancy that is in your mind. Allow it to reach maturation and watch the wonder that you will produce. Your goodness is real. Testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to challenge the spirit of impatience. Listen. God is a God of speed. But God only gives you your inheritance when you are built up. Everybody say built up. Be careful with unhealthy comparison. Business people listen. Career people listen. We were all classmates. Now this one is like this. This one has two houses. And I am here. Nothing is moving. Be careful. If you see that in your life, know it's an attack. Listen, listen. Especially for our dear sisters. Listen to me, my adorable ladies. Let me tell you this. 
you listen to what this arrogant world without Christ is telling you, you will not amount to anything. They will make you feel stupid for loving God. They will make you feel stupid for staying and growing. You will look so cheap and weak, but you stay and let God adorn you like Hadassah and lift you like a trophy in one day, one day. What is a prayer point of nations come to you because you are prepared? Don't be ashamed of where you are. You are still fruitful. Don't be under pressure. Listen, listen, let me tell you this. If you can conquer the pressure of proving a point, you have conquered life. The pressure of proving a point. I need to prove to the people in my family. I need to prove to the people in my village. They've been saying, what are you doing in Zaria for five years? Eh? Are you cursed that your life is not rising? Hold on. When God is done with you, my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by listen let me tell you a humorous story and then we'll pray some time back I was to inv be invited somewhere one of the places that I went to minister and a man of God was called and asked and said do you know Apostle Joshua Selman and he said well I've heard about him but I don't know him and the man at the other side of the phone advised the, the people to invite me and said Can't, we don't know this man don't invite him rather invite A B C D and the person at the phone said, you don't know the encounters I've had with this man. It's impossible for us, no matter what you say, we must invite him. That's what happens when you wait for God. There are men that continue to pray secretly. Why don't you fall so that it will justify their prophecy? But my brothers and my sisters, when God puts something in your spirit and puts something in your mind, you have watched people waste their time forever. They will waste their time forever. It is the finger of God that lifts you and keeps you. They will finish a meeting and say, don't promote Pastor Alpha. Sit down here. He will never rise. Just when they finish, the man goes back and by the next day, the promotion letter is out. Listen, there are not too many people like us on earth. It's important for you to understand this. It's not pride. It's a breed that is plucked out of fire. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. and admire today will be the things that will follow you tomorrow you would drive them and they say we can't go you called us you called us but he seek ye first the kingdom of God and his methodology his systems and all other things is a guarantee except this word your certificate can only take you so far your intellect can only take you so far but my brothers and sisters i commend you to god he says i commend you not just to your certificate not just to the advantage of your tribe not just to your family connection i commend you first to god and then to the word of his grace and he leaves you with an assurance that it is capable of building you up and giving you an inheritance a time will come those who mock you will give up they will see that you have risen to a height and a level where it will be stupid to talk about you the lifter of men lifting you I like you to decree and declare 
no power is stopping me from being fruitful fruitful in my spirit fruitful in my mind koinonia you pray shamakato shatia embrekato sakato raskima hashalakatos the anointing is growing in my spirit I'm full of the power of God full of the Holy Ghost some may trust in shadows and others horses but I trust in the name of the Lord I may not have relatives to back me I may not have a wealthy family to support me but I have received God and the word of his grace that is able, 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 able to lift me outside I will pray why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. 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 Hallelujah. Be fruitful. Carry that mentality. Every time the word of God says be fruitful, the devil takes you to your ATM and says how much is there. Every time the word says be fruitful, he says so why are you thinking of paying rent? You are even trusting God to raise the money for the rent. Does that look like fruitfulness? Let me tell you the devil is a liar. He's a master of the sense realm. And if you dwell there, you will say where are the members? You have 10 members and you have the effrontery to say you are fruitful. Are you ready to prophesy to yourself? Spirit, soul, and body, I am fruitful. Decree and declare. I will make you exceeding fruitful. Nations will come out of you. And kings out of your loins. Businessman prophesy. Yes, sir, with no evidence, I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Man of God, are you praying? I'm fruitful. The anointing is at work in my life. Nobody can reject the investment of the Holy Ghost upon my life. It may take time, but I'm rising in the name of Jesus Christ. My family members may not yet see the hand of God upon my life. Everybody around me may doubt the finger of God. I may even doubt it myself. But I give to the command. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. In spite of your failures, I am fruitful. Declare fruitful. Hallelujah. That's my mindset. Fruitful. 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 Take your eyes away. I am fruitful. The landlord harasses you. It's true. I'm fruitful. Still fruitful. You may not have money to prepare a meal. But in the name of Jesus, God is doing something. The wealth is not transferred to your account. The wealth is transferred to the soil of your mind. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom power. chapter 2 and verse 5 don't forget Philippians let this mind let this mindset let this body of understanding be in you listen hold on every great man you know is who he is not because of the wealth and the affluence the wealth and the influence is a receipt for something you have paid for when you see money in your pocket that money is a receipt 
you get receipts only when you have bought things the good shoe is a receipt the good cloth is a receipt the first class flight is a receipt it is not the reason why you are blessed it is the proof that you are already blessed are you getting me now how many of you know that sometimes when you go to a mall after you shop you have to patiently wait on the queue for the next cashier to attend to you that's what is happening to many of us you have already bought the things you are at the point of completing that transaction and then life will hand you the receipt it will come as a car it will come as open doors it will come as you never having to follow the bus for anything again it will come as you having the convenience to do certain things for the kingdom but until then be patient for some of you you are you, have, you are standing on that queue just waiting for your turn to come and my brothers and my sisters you will come up with a level of results that will surprise you can i tell you this don't be afraid of results that came through understanding don't be afraid of results that came through understanding most times you see because of the multiple failures like the man who planted when you plant by the wayside when you plant by the rock when you plant upon thorns that experience alone may make you think even the good soil will fail but you see when that seed begins to grow and becomes a great tree it will not only bless you it will bless the birds it will bless everybody who is passing around that's what god is doing with us are you getting what i'm saying very very important you are receiving something you are receiving the anointing but you are receiving an understanding so don't let the devil come and begin to talk jargons you will fail in your life you will fail in your business you will fail in marriage you will fail in um, um financially you will fail spiritually that organization you cannot be able to run an organization you, you cannot be able to run a ministry who told you that do you not know that it is wisdom and knowledge that creates stability they are the stabilizers of destiny and that's what god is doing so we are going to pray lord reconstruct my understanding to be able to receive the things that will make me fruitful lift your mind your, your voice and pray reconstruct my understanding reconstruct my understanding lord there are things in my mind that may not allow me to be fruitful i acknowledge them are you praying i acknowledge that there are limitations territorial limitations tribal limitations sociological limitations i've interacted with a kind of people who have kept me bankrupt mentally they may be my family members they may be my relatives they may be my classmates they may be well-meaning people if someone pray lord i give you the allowance to alter my understanding there is something i know or do not know about ministry that is allowing me to be unfruitful there is something i know or i do not know about finances that makes me to keep going up and down there is something i know or do not know about the anointing that doesn't allow me to host very superior levels of grace quicken my understanding quicken my understanding quicken my understanding hallelujah I apologize for taking time the holy spirit is giving me a scripture isaiah 11 and verse 2 we're still praying. isaiah 11 and verse 2 can you still have it projected isaiah 11 and verse 2 let's see if we can find it let me turn it here to save time isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 hmm. i'm handing over to you a secret is a secret that make men really great and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the sevenfold manifestation of the spirit of god and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord verse 3 it says and shall make him of quick understanding quick all of these spirits synergize themselves to make sure your understanding is quick this is what you have to pray a quickened understanding is a real miracle you can have as a student a five point c gpa yet your understanding is unfruitful the fortitude to understand life to know wisdom is understanding you become a priority personality by default your understanding upgrades you 
like you are upgraded from economy to a business class to first class your understanding upgrades you to a level in life where you never have to come down again you are not trying to stay it has stabilized you at a realm are you ready to pray finally lord quicken my understanding i confess that there are gaps in my knowledge i confess that there are gaps i i am learning already but my foundation is fighting my mindset i am i am still loyal to old ideas i am still loyal to old concepts lord is taking me a hard time to acclimatize myself to a new system of lifting i cry for mercy and i cry for grace is someone praying I am still sympathetic to a, a depraved level of thinking that will not allow you to do business with me. Hallelujah. A prophetic word is only useful when there is a vessel. The vessel is your heart. The vessel is your mindset when the Holy Spirit renews your mind it's like it's like a welder creating a container and once everything has been welded well then prophecy can deposit that spiritual investment upon you and you will find out that you will retain strong men retain wealth not money wealth the wealth of the anointing retained by strength not the strength of the flesh be strengthened in your inner man inner man that's where true true strong people are even physically if you are stronger than me it doesn't guarantee that you can defeat me is that true because my mind can create a strategy that will defeat you that's how it is it is not always to the physically strong it is not always in physical agility but the health of your spirit mind and a well-developed understanding you see I teach you and continue to stand with the Holy Spirit to work on our minds because as your mind begins to seek transformation it must be guided are we together the mind is like a womb seeking for any kind of seed and there are other seeds in other sessions I will show you that there is the part two of that parable that Jesus gave. We'll go to the part two while men slept. That's the part two of that story. Another sower also came and sowed a seed and left. So there are many sowers. And there are times you can open up your heart because you want to succeed. You open up your heart to zodiac and Scientology and all kinds of things to try to manipulate the cosmic world to release energy and once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God there are certain liftings if it happens it is only God that can do it are we together I declare over your life in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful in your spiritual life be fruitful in ministry be fruitful in business be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare for many of you it will do you like a dream for many of you this is the week that your manifestation begins in the name of Jesus and I speak over you that my God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency that you will abound in every good thing I decree and declare be fruitful be fruitful in your spirit mind be fruitful in your mind may the spirit of grace coordinate you to the exact information required for your lifting and I pray for courage there are people you have to say no to and have the grace to say look I love you but I have a track record of you being the reason why my mind will not receive the things of God you don't have to hate people but it's time to construct your environment creatively to allow the spirit of god bless you we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright 
We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nada oka ka sunanka ubangi ji ka isala bo. It's an anthem for a generation. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in the name We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Sit down. There used to be a song that we sang in a seminary that our generation will call your name this is not a sermon for tea and bread this is not a sermon for give me this god will do it but we're talking of nations The ministry of warfare and intercession that an anointing must come upon a generation to pray not for the purpose of showing who is more powerful there has to be a grace it's a corporate mantle it's not just prayer groups it's starting now as little prayer groups little a time will come there will be no leader it's a grace homes will become prayer altars schools will become pray it does not matter who wants to say what it is an ordinance signed by god's integrity let me tell you this if we cannot pray as a generation we're in trouble darkness will stamp us and stamp our children oh haman do not rejoice esther is still in the palace esther is still in the palace and she still has access to Hazarus. That which has been signed can be changed. Listen to me. The days that are coming are days when we have to trust God to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus all this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread we are talking of nations our children are in trouble hela sibra haskada barako teshilia hasia jele sabarusia sana ba hashila katus hela barutas kabarinda gadishia hasa rata baraka to jele kete baria Kataba, Shada Sidas, Ebrezi Gete Lesia Hasabandaka, Raparudo Supra Catiana, Rata Cinemas, Kele Barutasia, man carrying things that belong to a generation, not a program, not a conference, carrying mantles that are generational. Hebradu Shele Barutasia.
Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Verse 10. See, I have this day set you over territories, nations, and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build. God is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in Kano is yours God is sharing nations and saying I, I allocate territories who can sing for me that song will bow down and say you are God you know the song sit down let's sit down we have to make progress tonight hmm. listen to me there are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers listen to me these spirits influence culture these spirits create negative patterns in the minds of people they are called familiar spirits there is a reason why they are called familiar spirits they are spirits that have dwelt with people they grew up with people i shared this morning during the church service that one time i remember i was in shiroro we were ministering in a crusade and i saw a group it was up to 15 or 16 people women it was a pattern i saw there the moment the women gave birth they became deaf and dumb immediately i said what is this it was no longer a sickness listen when you see a widespread of a pattern it's a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits there are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a ceo this one was a customs officer but right now if you give him ten thousand he will say thank you what happened these powers 
There are churches, there are territories where a church cannot survive five years. Impossible. Something must happen. The man will die. A scandal will tear him down. Something must happen. There are powers. When Daniel began to pray, the prayer was affecting the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. The spirits that controlled Medopersia. His prayer, Daniel was not saying, Lord, sort me out. Uh -uh. He found out that the time of the captivity of Israel in Babylon had come to pass. And he started praying. I, Daniel, understood by books. I read and I saw that by this time in prophecy, we should not be in captivity. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And he began to pray. And when he began to pray, heaven, don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know. This is not about New Testament and Old Testament. It's what happens in the realm of the spirit. The moment they began to pray, Gabriel, the angel that brings messages, the angel of service, that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth, he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the Bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. There is ranking in the spirit, a prince, not a traditional ruler, a prince. Let me tell you this, the foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why satan will tear nations down all these childish teachings that continue to move around that negates the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation some of those teachings are deceptions activities of lying spirits the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. We are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there. We are watching a woman barren, her daughter barren, granddaughter barren. We say nothing is happening. How can you say nothing is happening? A grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory <laughs> hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land. There is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. Once you are more than 18, it does not disturb you. It's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers. He's not disturbing babies. He's not disturbing the young people. The old people already, they're already there. But those teenagers, I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers. Their resentment for God, their obsession for technology, their outspoken, that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion. And we are watching, saying nothing is happening. One day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory, they are doing it. There is a spirit making it happen. Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us, we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. 
you just think they are being stubborn no it's a spirit the spirit of defiance the spirit of rebellion when those age ranges become our governors and our senators that's when you will see the full assault of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. god has men elisha said tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in israel not there is a god in israel hallelujah you do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream tv if there is the name jesus there is the name holy spirit there is the name eternal life it falls under the same category as some of those words that we they don't allow to be pronounced including god jesus ah. you tell a preacher to preach and there's no name jesus there's no salvation there's no god there's no redemption what is he preaching The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men. It's not their ability to inflict sickness. No, that's cheap. It's not their ability to bring death. That's cheap. But to keep a man alive and to hijack them, whom the God of this world, who blinded their mind, the God of this world. There are gods that station within territories. There are territories where you don't find old men. The oldest man is 43. Because anybody that crosses it dies. I've seen territories like that. There are territories where all their men are dead. The territory is full of women. Because all the men die. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was only the male figures in your family. The devil took their lives away. And left the women. Was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male, two years and above, that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there. And while that is happening, we are laughing. You know, I've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard, on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking it me about the testimony of the dear lady one uh, precious lady that i came i met I saw you people so excited and I wanted to know what was going on. And when he told me the story, I said, you see it now? And someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind. Are you joking? Are you joking? I've seen demons so. This is not something I'm just talking. I've seen them. The first time I saw a real physical demon, it was then in the campus. I was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as i turned i saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me i'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables i've seen these spirits they are real i know what they do on earth i know what they do in families there are controlling powers that destroy marriages if you do not stand your ground i love you i love you is nonsense just keep going one day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you and this spirit will land on your head like a mantle and you see what happens to you what of men who kill their children have you not seen a trend recently now a trend of rape rape huh that all these guys just come and just rape ladies do you think those guys are just driven by desire are they not prostitutes no it's more than desire it's a spirit there is something it seeks to do 
sodomy is a spirit you know that right there is something it does and pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down joseph told his brothers i had a dream it's not my fault i went to bed and i had a dream the sun the moon 11 stars and the brother said that's all right they were the ones who were going to kill him listen we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way we must learn to pray these distractions you see the things that are happening in zaria now some of the developments the roads don't you think it's technology that is bringing it it's a signature of the prayer of the saints shut down the prayer of the saints in this city then you will know what satan has always wanted to do i believe in the ministry of prayer it is not the issue of being a pentecostal the days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon. You are praying to secure your children. Listen, let me tell you, this day and age, listen, do you know if your child leaves home to go to school, you should pray. What happens to that child from the door of your house to school? That child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know. By evening he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep daddy what is this and you say who taught you say my teacher taught me your teacher yes sir controlling powers koinonia is not thriving just because satan does not know we are here is striving because of the invincibility of prayer fire i said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry i supervise by myself and there is a reason why because of the strategic role that they play now every department plays that strategic role but because of the spiritual component the prayer department the worship team you always see me on their case with the leaders there is a reason why because let me tell you the truth when these instruments just become music we're in trouble when this singing just becomes entertainment we're in trouble when the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship we're in trouble and the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces 
that shape the minds of people a lady sent me a text recently she just graduated as soon as she graduated she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street now do you think an intelligent person will behave like that it's a spirit how many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home a little kekena pep just turned and left them there till a truck came and climbed them how many people have you seen final exam final paper they just find something on the ground and say that's it you are gone there is no such thing that is just is no coincidence is the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead the living to do with the dead i even wanted to buy the place they told me that there are, there are graves there ah, apostle don't buy why you are dead you are dead one time archbishop benson idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl i think it was an incantation and he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it they had already caught it say why waste why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice god does not love wasted he said gather the crumbs that there be no wastage see let me tell you this if you do not know the power of prayer you will fear demons to death hallelujah we sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses i know a man true story in just years ago he was slapped by i don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit he he works then in the teaching hospital and he said he used to hear that means the um what they call that place doctor where they keep mortuary in the night while doing his work true story he will hear like discussions you know like people have woken up and they are talking true story and one time he attempted he shouted according to him he said shut up and he i don't know whether he he wanted to open the door or something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not and the 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 spirit slapped him until that man died he did not recover spirits are real don't wait till you see them they are real my mother once told me a story they went to bury someone this thing did not I'm, I'm not sure it's more than six seven years they went to bury someone and physically as they were dropping the coffin fire physically fire came out and killed some people not parables not vision fire came out and killed some people have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house all these things will remain when there is no prayer just saying i am the righteousness of god in christ hallelujah that's not the way it works we are legislators we enforce things we don't just wish things this wishing mentality will cost the church a lot you no know, it's impossible who am i that the devil will not come jesus went to fast satan went to join him he was fasting satan was fasting too he was waiting there for 40 days for jesus who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity from whence comest thou jesus asked satan he said from voyaging to and fro there was not a place that he did not go to have you considered my servant job yes i came to his house it's only that he built a fortification and i could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, their shops in many areas 
they are losing in business why because some doubt somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther you sense anything around your vicinity you don't wait to understand what it is tap your wife and say wake up when you do that twice three times one month the devil will know where to pass see let me tell you this whatever you allow to happen to your life don't blame god whatever you allow to happen to your family don't blame god i'm i'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood not a need driven prayer hallelujah i heard of a man recently for one four years I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to be sure so that i don't exaggerate anything four years the wife refused to get pregnant the man was tired one day he came back from fellowship the wife was sleeping he came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy no i mean it if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking he was tired of this thing and said no he knelt down you just sleep you are my wife i'm the one who paid your dowry let me face this spirit of barrenness see there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory within your family hallelujah i was so encouraged when i heard it literally prayed not like impartation or yet no he sat down knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed you can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life there are times that you can put your job your 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 certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you our generation has not understood the power of prayer those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer mm -mm. Mm -mm. they don't negotiate they decide and agree god are you in this if god says yes declare anything that stands the way hallelujah praise the lord a prayerless christian is a powerless christian a prayerless territory is a powerless territory a prayerless couple is a powerless couple a prayerless business is a powerless business a prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry Please sit down boy our time is gone the first key to territorial dominion is priesthood koinonia pray don't just pray on tuesday pray pray you go back this night trust god for grace even if it's 15 minutes walk around your room a little before you lie down apostle you don't know how busy i am that is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life if you search for excuses you will always find one let me tell you this i have taught you and i pray you will believe it master the power of night prayers master the power of night prayers a generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that would not be powerful I'm telling you this see there is a time when you will enter your Sabbath in experience a young man personally now it's not I'm not saying this is the Bible It's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six 
and you don't have time for your destiny you are building rubbles the night is when men who are men pray the night is when men who are priests pray the night is when men who are watchmen pray the night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray let me tell you sincerely i have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep it's a sacrifice you are supposed to get a job that god will use to change your family and your territory and while you are sleeping they send a letter from a parastator we need these 41 names in the list and there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed and every other person is in a herbally shrine forcing his name to remain there and you are snoring away your your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist i may not have access to the office but i can pray i can pray i've seen the ministry of angels in my life i know that angels are real i know that they are real when you pray there are times i've tried to look for things and i could not find them and i prayed and slept and in my dream i got up and went to where it was and i woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life i curse it now this night in the name of jesus all the movies internet browsing that distract you i'm not saying they are wrong but if it can sit down and distract your prayer life i separate you from it now it was in the night that jacob wrestled with god and got power it was in the night that god came to solomon and he received something men receive things in the night don't waste your night charge your atmosphere sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship while you are sleeping you are receiving you wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing see let me tell you these are not things we are these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. oh lord help our generation help our generation help our generation in the name of jesus christ hear me if you are a minister of the gospel in this place that means you are in ministry or you are trusting god to be in ministry please wake up i deliver you from laziness hear me ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed number two goodness the second principle or territorial dominion is the power of faith hebrews 11 33 the power of faith you cannot take over a territory when you doubt god you cannot take over a territory 
when you do not believe God Hebrews 11 please read everyone one two read who through faith uh -huh, subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions listen the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith what is faith your conviction your depth of persuasion on who god is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe god and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny ah, the bible says that listen he said that lot and co were hijacked and captured and abraham said what did i hear you carried my cousin gather all the war men and let us go ah, courage courage faith the righteous are as bold as a lion that lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people the lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when god called me to ministry i called my father and my mother and i knelt down before them and I told them God has called me all my life I'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said God bless you we bid you Godspeed go well that's it I'm not doing well because the church I was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what I said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it god will never tell you what you can do you know you have had god when what he says is bigger than you when god told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when god showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray where you are pray from the depth of your heart please pray from the depth of your heart Thank 
Kaparaduka Sadebredi Gede Baladaba. Pray everyone you are praying in the spirit. Kaparato sada brada gede baladabu, emprateke la prasada balato brada gede baladabu. Skala baranda kata pras gede balato sabra gede baladabu, emprata kapro sede belekete shala paria da baladaba, rapado sada branda gada baladu. It's a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. It's a sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Shikaruta Salabara. Two more minutes. Pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through you are building something for a generation you are building something that will last 
Rain will come and go, but what comes upon you comes and stays. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Let's continue. The power of faith. Now faith is, the Bible says, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, the tangibility of things not seen. Hear me, everyone. You want to take over territories. You will need to believe in God. Not believe in an uncle. Not believe in an auntie. Not believe in an asset. Not believe in an investment. You need to believe in God. God is able. I may not know how, but I know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory many christians and especially our generation we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith we doubt everything and we do not take god at his word i've given you a little story years ago when i used to bank those days with first bank way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle a lot. And I would stand up and start trekking to first bank. I would queue for hours believing. Because I read in my Bible, what things soever ye desire. When you pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless but your faith is being developed the idea is not for you to go and see or receive something the idea is an exercise of your faith so that tomorrow when he says take this nation you say lord i'm able we are well able unbelief is dangerous my only limitation in my life is the voice of god and time my only limitation in life is the voice of God and time. Time that honors the law of process. If God tells me to walk through this crowd to that door, I will not even see that rain is falling. I'm on my way going. Whatever stands my way, the faith that God gives. Do you not know that faith is a shield? You can use faith as a shield. It's a wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first to be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We are a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring. It's a well you have to dig by believing God. If I perish, I perish. When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home brand new out of the cave slot it in and there are koinonia messages all how do you explain that that's what happened when faith listen you will never see the glory of god until you believe you will never see the glory of god until you believe where a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move your only guarantee is the word of God.
the word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do. From the days when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal, I believe that was a career of the blessing. From the day when I could not pray for one person to be healed of headache, I believe that his anointing was upon my life. And I believe that he was going to use me. We are going to pray one prayer. I'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain. I'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen. So now you are going to pray. Help my unbelief. Lord, whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you. Help my unbelief. I claim that I trust you. But it's really my uncle that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my certificates that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my skill, my gift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. Shila parus kariada balara balaba. Koinonia pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. My God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, hear me. You need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say, Lord, I believe you. I may let everyone call me stupid, but I believe you. Let everyone mock me and laugh at me, but I believe you. I believe you. Your word is true, and I believe you. When you say I am great, I believe you. When you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. 
When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. But as it is, you look so weak and you will not believe it. You don't know the village I come from. I cannot even speak English well. That's not what God is saying. Believe me and let me take you there by myself. Years ago, when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government, I believed him. Our very first crusade, I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land. We didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time. Every one of our crusades that we had gone, I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings. I believe God. It's none of your business who my father is. It's none of your business who my mother is. That's not what God said. That's not the condition for his word. I believe him. The same way some of you are here and God, you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals. You wake up in the morning and say, it's a lie. It's not for people like us. We are the any house. Stop that, that ungodly talk and say, Lord, with all humility, I believe. Let it come. I believe you. It was in Port Harcourt. I was tending to a sick, one of our sick aunties, where I was staying in 2007. I was in Port Harcourt. And she was on her sick bed. She eventually died. And I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there. And I was there. We were running shifts. And then from the... I don't know which of the floors now. I just looked at um, the window and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision. And in that vision, I saw the international headquarters of this ministry. I saw 37 flags and I saw white men. I saw nations coming. I said, what is this? And God said, that's where you are going. I believed him. I said, let's go, oh God. Let's go. I believe you. God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience. I believed him. I believed him. I believed him. Ah. Do, can you believe God? One day I remember growing up, I told my mother, I said, do not worry about the things that are happening. One day, you will eat and never have to beg for bread again and it will be in your lifetime i said it see the righteousness of faith speaks it does not assume you make statements that sometimes you are afraid my wife right now we may be soaking gary but in the name of jesus we will give to nations and when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say foolish man respect yourself my faith it reaches out to you i believe your word for me today my faith reaches out to you i believe Listen, one day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said, son, I will give you a gold mine. I believed it literally. I know it may have a prophetic meaning, but I believed it literally. Until three years ago, when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine, God said it and I believed it. See, listen, let me tell you this. This ego and the feeling of saying, let them not say, I believed God and it was a lie. 
if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust God so what if you find out it's not God that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow God said it but I'm ashamed I'm afraid let them not laugh at me I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance it was a stupid thing it was suicidal but I did it and God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again I remember it was in this ministry God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry literally 0.00, .00 and I believed him stupidly believed him one week after that God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from but I know whom I believed if God says I will give you a house believe him if God says you will feed nations believe him if God says you will pay the school fees of a generation believe him don't believe your ATM let God be true and every man a liar please hear what I'm telling you today this life and this destiny I stand before the God of heaven and may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance but there are many things one of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens there are many things that I've said today prof said something here that really touched me um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when God says it he would do it if he did it before he can do it again Before, if he did it before, he can do it again. He can do it again. If he did it before, he will do it again. He will do it again. When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and say, sit down. Sit down. Today, it's amazing the way one by one, it's already starting like droplets, but it's an avalanche. It will come and you will see the songs that come from here, songs that will mentor nations, songs of warfare, songs of victory, songs of the throne. You see, most times we don't believe men till it's too late. We we'll say, he said it all. I believe him. I believe you. That's why you see me stand to teach you. Do you know, let me confess, true confession. I was, I had a meeting before coming here. You know, I had a meeting and then um, just briefly met with uh, a family and then a woman before coming, preparing to come for Koinonia. And while I was preparing, I was so tired. I sat down and I didn't know which one to do, to eat or to rest. And I stood, I was so tired. And I was telling the woman, I said, my God, all I want to do now is to sleep. But I just got up. I said, I rebuke that statement. There is a generation to mentor. There are people to raise. And she said, ah, Apostle, I know you. As soon as you are done with all this talk, the zeal of the Lord that is in you, you will quickly go and prepare and stand up. And truly, you see me standing now. I'm done here and I'm counseling for hours. Seven in the morning, I'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function, do a few things. 
and return. Sacrifice. But that happens because God said so. God promised me that he would keep me strong and vibrant. I believed him. You do what I do in the strength of the flesh, you will not be sick, you will die. I say it without exaggeration. You literally will fall down and you will die. One day my father warned me and said, look my son, just do your best. Take out time once in a while and rest. I said, I know and I believe I will rest. But the king's business requires haste. There are destinies to be raised. There are impartations to come to nations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I went to bed to five. It was as if I just turned my head and I checked the time. And it was morning. The last thing I remember was that I was going to take, there was water by the side of my bed and a drink. And I remember I was preparing that in five minutes I would just turn and take a sip. And I had slept. It was already morning. And I got up, had to brush up on my notes to come. Why? Because when you are about his business, he will maintain you. There are things you cannot lie about. Not for long. It will be clear. See, let me tell you this. God has been faithful to me. You see these hands? I have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases. Communicable ones. I'm not supposed to be alive today. Based on the things and the people I have touched. You must believe God. God told me, forget about cars and houses. Focus on me. I've raised men already to do that for you. I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car. I was happy and God said, it's not your car. Just pray for him and let him carry his car and go. I wanted to say, God, the next time you will give me lift. <laughs> but I was happy. Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired you are just passionate but listen let me tell you this you must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow if you love your today more than tomorrow the door has closed closed by you hallelujah praise the lord when i was in secondary school and the fire of god fell upon us we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called Operation Katakus. Yes. We would pray sometimes immediately after preps. It was supposed to be a little one hour prayer. And some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them, look, go to your hostel and sleep. One hour, it will become a vigil. I was made the timekeeper of the school in JS2. That was the level of the hand of God that was upon my life. Quarter to five, someone would wake me every day without fail. Quarter to five. That was when I started having encounters with this. I didn't even know that they were angelic encounters. Fifteen minutes on the dot to five. Don't tap me. I wake up. Father, help this generation. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit. And the power that that realm wields upon this realm. All you see is not all there is. Hallelujah. So when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer hmm. the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready 
the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results Let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago i started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be scriptures about talk it and about a blessedness and the crutch that said, happens to a and man the end of it. whose delight in, is in, in the in law of god six years, so as someone he says about nine thousand is in the law his, of god his and though his church is and full of crutches he meditates I day said, this and is night. mastery. He says that that man is like a tree was in South Africa. planted by and the I rivers of water. Who leaves you not with the Lord now? Prophet, 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 Prophet. I traveled to South Africa to meet him and I met him and I told him why I was here. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man I was there for planted by the rivers of water. I I your knees are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever mistaken. shine and you will forever bear. Many unbelievers. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like yes, it they would hit say, that walk notification bell to receive see, many more updates from us when the because leader you know that, that whatever content is here is, is going to you send you on calls at every time it's going to Listen, make you attain when you receive that trace and receive that dimension many Thank times you. you will see how cheap it works some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of god is here and it will be as if you are acting drama and even you you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tightened yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay lord forgive me now i'll start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe 
that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg i'd wanted going to meet robert Lerden and then charles and francis hunter unfortunately i couldn't meet them i sat down and i listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house i listed them and i searched for the individuals that had those graces like a chef says i need salt where do we buy salt sabo where do we this is how i listed these graces like a bee and i searched for them one by one i was very very foolish at a point in my life i knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that i would need for my life and i would need for this apostolic office i pursued dr miles mudok and bishop david oyedeko these were the two dimensions of of wisdom that came to my life i saw the wisdom of god at work in their life and i said this foolishness must end i pursued that grace i pursued it with all my heart are we together yes results whoever commands results becomes the leader whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with i submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry they are not guesswork there is an exact knowledge that is back of them they will continue to be reproduced again and again when there is increase when there is the outstretched hand of god when there is favor there is prosperity when there is passion and hunger for god these are results please do not join the people who ignore results i'm wrapping up i know the rain is done but just just be patient make sure as they are coming out they are still listening please you are going to pray for results listen to me I told myself God there is no need to be in ministry if I'm not producing results that you bear fruits and that your fruits abide much fruits some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that God is here you met him it's called results the next time you come you will not come alone let me tell you empty pews are proof of lack of results it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true are we together in fact empty anything emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you i knew i saw the way pastors used to raise money now please i'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of God and the body of Christ but I saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money I saw the way pastors birthday pastor I, I said no this is not Bible but then I asked myself a question how will you eat and how will the ministry thrive and then I said I have to go to the Word of God and find out and then I found out that God can open a door for a man that no man can shut I found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of God let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found first Corinthians 29 12 I apologize we're wrapping up first first Chronicles 29 12 first Chronicles 29 12 I saw this scripture in my dream I was sleeping and this scripture came and I woke up and I saw it and I rejoiced I said that means God is shifting me to another dimension both riches and what honor come from you you reign over all of them it's a dangerous scripture both riches and honor come from thee you reign over all and in thy hand is power and might 
Look at all the things we need in one verse. Riches, honor, power, might, greatness, strength. God is the owner. I saw it in my dream. I went to sleep home and I saw that scripture. I got up and I searched it. I said, this is this. If this scripture were a clot, it would have faded by now. I've prayed this scripture into my life. See, I stepped into the grace for favor when I prayed for favor for one month. That was my prayer request. Not for a selfish reason. Lord, a man can carry favor bodily. Let me be an example of it. Do you know many times when I pray these things, it's so that I will bring it and you will receive. It's not so much for myself. When I received the grace for long life, it, it was with speed. The day I was coming for Koinonia, it was as if I was going for my wedding reception. Give me a chance, let me stand. These people were singing and I couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that I would climb up. I came with a grace that I did not have. The grace for long life. You can carry graces like a fisherman. When you catch something and you push your hook, you draw it, force it out. When you see what it is. This kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries. Deep mysteries. Deep mysteries. Hallelujah. Both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it god has chosen this ministry God has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation. It's an honor we receive. He made it so. Results. We are going to pray. We have to wrap up. Listen to me. Koinonia, hear me. My heart is pained if your life does not command results. Let it first start from your life. Then we'll start commanding results over territories. Was it not Joshua that told the son to stand? Results. There are results that can shut down a nation in one day. A time will come, kings will come to seek the counsel of God from us. And say, what is God saying? He said, kings will entreat your favor. When God told me he would give me access to kings and I would speak to kings in this nation, I believed him. Listen, it's not pride. In two weeks, I'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting. All of them gathered in one place, the International Conference Center, and I will be speaking to them, the counsel of God. When God says it, I believe it. Listen. It, this thing is not, it's not, it's not about a man. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Results are powerful. If you doubt results, then what are you at? Results. You must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit. I'm tired of green leaves. Lord, this fig tree must bear fruit. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results honor my life with results Please pray. You reign, you reign. 
Jesus, the grace that will cause you to reproduce every result you see here. May that grace rest upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the grace that will bring you into strange dimensions, wonder-walking dimensions of results, may that grace rest upon your life. I speak upon your life access to kings may that grace come upon you access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ I have set before you an open door I decree and declare the kind of influence that God can put upon a man. Influence is not a carnal desire. It is so that you can rise to a point where the nations can look up to your life. In the name of Jesus, the grace that can cause a generation to look at a man and follow Christ through that man. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. The grace for strange signs and wonders wonders of the spirit may that grace come upon you now may that grace rest upon you now thank you Lord Jesus every man who must honor and recognize what you carry I speak to them by prophecy in this season and in the name of Jesus in this month of October I command someone must celebrate your grace someone must celebrate what you carry for the sake of his majesty in the name of Jesus I compel men to discern the grace upon your life I compel men to discern the hand of God upon you I compel men to descend the unction upon you. Father, we thank you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Let me pray one prayer concerning favor and your finances. Please allow me pray it. God sees my heart. God sees how much I pray for you every time. There is a dimension of the blessings of the Lord that I want you to step into. And the reason is because it will give you the time to serve Him. 
I pray for you in the name of Jesus the wealth that comes by prophecy I speak to your life carry that grace now 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 I command your bands to be filled with plenty I speak wine and oil to your treasury in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the kind of favor that the saints need to rise to the position of influence that will allow them legislate on behalf of the kingdom may the grace for that favor rest upon you enter into prepared blessings let me pray for you multiplied visions and spiritual experiences hear me the spiritual blindness that stops your eyes from seeing what God is doing I tear that veil now I decree and declare everywhere you find yourself I compel the people there to look up to you as you look up to Christ listen don't sit back doubting what you are saying no every utterance is backed by the throne I'm not speaking as a man when God calls men he backs them And that every door you must enter in this season because we advance through the entrance of doors I speak to that door let it be open for you now let it be open for you now indeed it will be said about us that we are a people that the Lord has helped marvelously helped like Uzziah in the name of Jesus father we declare that our territory will come under the influence of your name and your grace we will never give an inch of our territory to the reign of darkness and Satan we will stand as watchmen until we see the reality of your power and your glory rest upon our land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen and amen our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle I want to make it right with Jesus apologize because of the rain we've had to stretch but you are here and you are saying I need a fresh start with the Lord Jesus we have just one minute for you please be careful no moving around carelessly so that we can have those who are coming out to come if you're on your way coming here whether you are inside you're outside I like you to boldly or you are saying apostle I really want to rededicate my life to Christ I know the implication of this that you have shared please boldly summon the courage take a step of faith as we clap and salute them come and stand right at the altar here while I pray for you God bless you people are coming celebrate them as they come koinonia is this the best you can do those coming from outside please clear the way for them clear the way for them God bless you God bless you koinonia keep clapping Let's celebrate them as they come to make Jesus Lord of their lives, genuinely and truthfully. Apostle, I believe Jesus can give me a new start. You are right. Come, join them. Join them quickly. If you are coming from outside, please rush and be careful with the ground because it rains. So. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes 
are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.